Welcome to Lynch Street CME Church. We are so thankful you have decided to worship with us. Whether you are joining us live, in person, or in the virtual space, we again are so thankful for your presence here on today. If you like what we're doing here and would like to encourage our ministry as we continue building disciples for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, then feel free to take this time to check out our ways of giving, for it is only through your support that we are able to continue on this journey. Our Cash App handle is, as you see it above here on the screen, along with our Easy Tide and in-person collection info. But wait, there's more. Please join us for our midweek services also. We host Bible study every Wednesday afternoon at 12 p.m. in a hybrid style where we offer in-person and virtual access to this session and a 6.30 p.m. virtually only session via Zoom. Our children's, youth, and adult church school meets every Sunday at 9.30 a.m. with in-person and virtual access available. In addition, feel free to join in and engage with our young adults every Tuesday evening at 7 p.m. as they immerse themselves into the church school lesson via the app GoToMeeting. And please... Continue to support our lay council as they have kicked off their recycling program. Partnered with Derek of Environmental Recycling Organization, they are collecting clean plastic clear bottles and aluminum cans to church in clear plastic bags. Drop off sites are as you see here on the screen. And if you have any more questions or concerns with this initiative, please reach out to the lay council's leadership as they will be happy to assist. Our link tree info can be found above, which gives you access to all of our virtual platforms. Can't make a meeting or a service? No worries. Each service will be streamed live via Facebook and YouTube for your later viewing pleasure. Again, thank you all so much for worshiping with us today here at Lynn Street CME Church, and we hope that you will visit with us again very, very soon. Until we meet again, have an awesome, great, stupendous rest of your day. Bye, guys.
Sarah Paul Branchy. The Lord of Life, popular by demand, is approaching. Riding on your coat, he enters into victory. victory. If all shouts and stop, the rocks will the rocks will ring with joy. There will be some who will not shout or shout. There will be some who will who will cling to their fear. Be ready for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the one elected by design. Truly is coming. Yes, Hosanna, Hosanna, save us. Glory to God in the highest whom we worship today. Our opening song, we lift our hands in the sanctuary. for the affirmation of faith. In whom do we believe? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered upon the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sent at the hell May now be seated. We're ready to have our morning prayer now by little Miss Turner. Our prayer, our morning prayer. Good morning, church. Will you please bow your heads for the prayer? Dear God, thank you for this day. Thank you for all the blessings you have given us in this life, even when we don't deserve it. Through your grace and mercy, you bless us in any way. Lord, please continue to bless and strengthen our pastor and first lady. Thank you for, for thank you for everyone in our presence. And Lord, bless the ones who want to be here but couldn't. Please help us live each day with joy and the love of God. In our hearts, in your name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Good 
morning, church. Good morning. Um, these are Sunday's announcements. Resurrection Sunday will be March 31st, 2024. Church school will be at 9 30 a.m. and worship service will be at 10 30 a.m. Rehearsals will be March 23rd, 2024 at 12 30 and March 30th, 2024 at 10 a.m. Please see Sister Julia Harris Brown for further details. Also, remember to bring litany folders on Resurrection Sunday. Monday, Thursday service will be March 28th, 2024 at 7 p.m. That service will be held at Young's Chapel, Sydney Church in Jackson, Mississippi. Good Friday will be March 29th, 2024 at 7 p.m. That will also be at Center CME Church featuring Reverend Thomas Keyes, which will be the speaker, presiding elder Reverend Dr. Jamie L. Capers, and the host pastor will be Reverend Willie Davis. The spring convocation will be April 4th through the 5th on in 2024. Bishop Kenneth W. Carter, presiding prelate. Registration will be $50, $50 at Reeves Temple CME Church. April book study is Basics of Setting Belonging, the Meaning of Church Membership. Hard copies of the book are available for $8. See Sister Linda Russell for further details. Ministry CME Church Baptism Service with Pastor Jamie L. Capers will be April 21st, 2024 at 11 o'clock a.m. All persons desiring to be baptized must contact Sister Kiki McMurray to schedule a meeting with Pastor Capers by April 17th, 2024. Lynn Street CME Church Community Outreach and Fun Day. New date is June 8, 2024. Volunteers are needed. See Reverend Johnny Smith III for further details. The South Sudan Well Project will be May 24, 2024. Give a special donation by via Cash App, Easy Tide, or offering envelopes. Your help means a lot to our brothers and sisters in South Sudan. Help increase our social media presence. Our YouTube is Lynn Street CME Church, Facebook Lynn Street CME Church as well, and Instagram is at Lynn Street CME. Let's share the great things God is doing here in Lynn Street. How can we do so via social media? Subscribe or follow, check in on Facebook and Google and write a review, like and or share Sunday's worship recording, and like and or share daily posts. Welcome. First time and returning family and friends sharing with us. A special welcome to Elder, Elder Ursula Todd Williams. We're excited and overjoyed and blessed to have you. Be sure to complete the information card and please come again. These are the Sunday's announcements. Good morning. Good morning. I'll be reading the Old Testament scripture. Psalm 139, 7 through 18, New Living Translation. I can never escape from your spirit. I can never get away from your presence. If I go up to heaven, you are there. If I go down to the grave, you are there. If I ride the wings of the morning, if I dwell by the farthest oceans, even there your hand will guide me and your strength will support me. I could ask the darkness to hide me and the light around me to become night. But even in darkness, I cannot hide from you. To you, the night shines as bright as day. Darkness and light are the same to you. You made all, del all the delicate inner parts of my body and knit me together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous. How well I know it. You watched me as I was being form formed in other solution and I was woven together in the dark of the womb. You saw me before I was born. Every day in, of my life is recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. How precious are your thoughts about me, O oh God. They cannot be numbered. I, can even, I can't even count them. They outnumbered the grains of sand, and when I wake up, you still with me. Thank you.
11th chapter, 8 through 10th verses. New, nat- New International Version. Many people spread their cloaks on the road while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. The meaning of Palm Sunday, what is it? A commemoration of how Jesus Christ had become a popular figure of his time, entered in Jerusalem in triumph, sign- signaling the start of the week when he is elected by design leading to his death and resurrection. Why do we celebrate it? Palm Sunday demonstrates that glory and suffering are sides of the same coin. We cannot have one without the other. We glorify Jesus as the true King of Kings and Lord of Lords and yet also see how the road to glory must pass through suffering. This is the same road he calls us to follow him on. Our popularity will garner attention from people who may elect us by God's design to glorify God through a period of suffering. The dethroning symbol of palm leaves. 
Palm leaves were originally associated with the Feast of Booths as a symbol of thanksgiving for God's provision. 150 years before Jesus came, it evolved into a dethroning symbol when Jerusalem welcomed Judas with palm branches after he liberated the city from their pagan overlords. We sometimes wave it in the same dethroning spirit, recognizing that Jesus brings a new kingdom. What do we do? Palm branches are waved as the reenactment of the people responding to the popular triumph entry of Jesus. We reflect on the contrast between the earthly and heavenly kingdoms. Some churches keep the branches until the next Ash Wednesday, burning them to prepare the ash. By another name, Palm Sunday is sometimes celebrated as Passion Sunday, when the sufferings of Jesus known as the Passion and the and events detailing his election by design led to the crucifixion are re-encountered. This is often done in churches that do not observe Monday, Thursday, or Good Friday with services. Thank you. Good morning, church. Good morning. I will be reading the reading for you today. Jesus set his face towards Jerusalem, where he where he becomes popular by demand. Our Lord is on journey. Still standing, leading to his election to the Father. Jesus invites us to follow him. Then Jesus told his disciples, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want us to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. Our Lord is on our journey. May we have the grace to follow his trial and to give to him our very lives, giving glory to the one and true living God. For in giving away our Please remain standing for the waving of our palms. We're going to ask the musician to play something very soft, and we're going to wave, wave our palms. Let me pray over first. Heavenly Father, we thank you for these palm branches that we all are holding in our hands. We thank you, dear Master. We realize and know that over 2,000 years ago, your son came into, went into Jerusalem. And people were waving these palm branches and saying, Hosanna in the highs. And Lord, we thank you. We thank you for the victory. We thank you for saving us. We thank you, oh God, for just the meaning of these palm branches. Lord, we realize and know that this is Holy Sunday, Holy Week, Passion Week beginning. When Jesus was on his way to the cross, we thank you. We thank you because we realize and know that he carried all of our sins there. And Father, we thank you because we realize and know that no one else was able to do it, but he did. You loved us so much that you sent your son. And Father, we want to say thank you this morning. As we hold these palm branches in our hand, the meaning of prosperity, we thank you for blessing us with salvation and knowing that salvation free in Jesus' name. Let's wave our branches and say, Hosanna in the highest. Thank you, Lord, for salvation. Amen.
just before the choir sing, we are so happy this morning to have with us uh, one of our presiding elders uh, from the uh, Aberdeen and Tubalo district. After the choir sang, you would hear her. We thank God for how he helped sent this lady here, Lady Presiding Elder, to preach to us this morning. Let the church say amen. amen. And we're also happy this morning to see our own Presiding Elder and our own <laughs> Pastor Cable and his family. Isn't that right? Amen. Elder Ulysses also one. See, I didn't want to mess up that first name. Todd Williams. After the choir sang, the next voice that you would hear would be Elder Williams of the Aberdeen and Tubalo District. Let the church say amen. Take me to the king I don't have much to bring My heart is torn in pieces It's my offering Take me to the king Truth is I'm tired Options are few I'm trying to pray But, but where are you? I'm all church down Hurt and abuse I can't fade what's left to do truth is I'm weak no strength to fight no tears to cry even if I try but still my soul refuses to die mm -mm. one touch will change my life take me to the king i don't have much to bring my heart is torn in pieces it's my offering Lay me at the throne Leave me there alone To gaze upon your glory And sing to you this song Take me to the King This I'm In these games, oh, I need a word for the people's pain. So, Lord, speak right now, let it fall like rain. No rules, no religion. I've made my decision to run to you, the healer that I need. Take me to the king. I don't have much to bring. My heart is torn in pieces. It's my offering. Lay me the throne leave me there alone to gaze upon your glory and 
should be on our feet. All of us should have been on our feet even if you didn't like the song. Just the fact that he got up and he gave God what he had. See, because if the roles were reversed, we'd want someone to clap for us. we want someone to celebrate us. And I think we ought to just take a moment and celebrate our young folk. Amen? There you go. Hallelujah. Because if we don't celebrate them, I promise you, there's someone that will. If we don't encourage them, there is someone that will. If we don't wrap our arms around them and love on them, there is someone that means them no good that will. So I just want to thank, I want to thank my greeters that greeted me this morning when I came through the door. And my escort that escorted me in, I'm grateful. I'm grateful and I want to thank your pastor and your presiding elder, Elder Capers, for the invitation. I do not take it lightly. Because before I was anything else, God called me to preach. So it's not about the position, but there is a word. My daughter texted me last week and she sent me a message. She says, I don't know what these new preachers doing. She said, he read his scripture. He hadn't gone back to it yet, mom. And she said, he's talking about everything. And I don't know what he's talking about. She said, where are you preaching next Sunday? <laughs> and I told her, and she drove in from Ensley, Alabama. She said, because I want to hear some good preaching. <laughs> now, I don't know if I'm going to meet her expectation. Lord knows I don't. But I do want to recognize her for being here. Danielle, she's shaking her head because neither one of us like this kind of attention. But will you at least raise your hand? And I'm excited that she's here because she has been ill. And she was ill almost to death and we did not know it where she had lost almost her entire volume of blood. And for two years, she did iron infusions and blood transfusions every two or three months. But she had surgery in December. And she's here today. And I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful that God saw fit to send her to the right place at the right time, to the right doctors. That we're not trying to experiment, but we look to find a solution. And now she doesn't take any more iron pills. Hallelujah. 
And so now I know how I'm supposed to go into what God told me to do. Because this wasn't planned. I wasn't planned because we kind of alike. I, we don't like attention if we don't have to get it. I so told Sister Patricia, there you go with that camera. Let us bow. God, I thank you now. I thank you now for this preaching privilege. Thank you for being God like only you can. Now allow the words of my mouth, the word that you have put in my spirit, allow me to speak in your confidence in your purpose and in your plan. God, I'll always be so very careful to give you the praise. Give us an ear to hear what the Spirit of God is saying to the church. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. The people of God say amen, amen, amen and amen. The world we live in today seems to have a new obsession called popularity. And it's twofold. Either there are those that are vying for, to be popular or those that want to be with the ones that are popular. And as I was preparing for this morning, I was in between sleeping and awake. And the Holy Spirit began to deal with me and brought something to mind that in my natural state I never would have thought of. And he reminded me of the 2016 presidential election between Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. And I'm probably the most non-political person you'd ever meet, so it was odd that the Holy Spirit would lead me that way. But he said, remember the vote and that election was the election where a lot of Americans found out or discovered or learned about the difference between the popular vote and the electoral vote. It was that moment when everyone was looking at numbers and thought they had won. In that moment, Hillary Clinton received 65,853,514 votes, whereas Donald Trump only received 62,984,828 votes. So when you look at the numbers, it would appear that Hillary Clinton should have won because she had the popular vote. But what many of us did not take into consideration is the electoral college, which is made up of those persons from each state to represent whatever their majority vote would be. It's similar to us going to general conference. You know, you're gonna have so many delegates according to your membership. It's the same way with the Electoral College. How many senators you have and how many persons you have in the House determine how many electoral votes you get. Hmm. So in the Electoral College, you have to have, there are a total of 538 electoral votes. You must get 270 of those to win. And what we discovered with that election is that if you win the states with the most electoral votes, then you win the election. Which means you can be popular and still not win. So what do I mean by design? We Design means God has built us. When an architect designs a building, he designs or he or she designs the building so that it meets the need of whoever is purchasing the building. So in other words, God has designed us in such a way that no matter what comes, 
We built for it. You know, we, we, we've got this thing going on where we always say, turn to your neighbor. But I don't want you to turn to your neighbor. I want you to put your hand right there. And I want you to say, I'm built for it. I'm built for this. You might say, built for what? what? Whatever you're going through. You built for it. God designed us for it. God made us for it. He equipped us for it. But most of the time, the design does not get the popular vote. The word says this, Mark 8, 11, which has been read in your hearing. But the other text, the lectionary text, comes from Mark 15. And it reads as follows, beginning at verse 6. Now it was the custom at the festival to release a prisoner whom the people requested. A man called Barabbas was in prison with the insurrectionists who had committed murder in the uprising. The crowd came up and asked Pilate to do for them what he usually did. Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews, asked Pilate, knowing it was out of self-interest that the chief priest had handed Jesus over to him but the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have Pilate release Barabbas instead. What shall I do then with the one you call the king of the Jews? Pilate asked. Crucify him, they shouted. Why, what crime has he committed, asked Pilate. But they shouted all the louder, crucify him, crucify him. Now, we celebrate this Sunday as being Palm Sunday, and we read the text in Mark 11 where we, they were waving the palms because Jesus was coming into the city, and they were celebrating him. Can I use the term popular? He was popular that day. He was popular that, that particular day because we don't know if it's because they knew he had something that they needed. You know, they had demonstrated. He had demonstrated what he could do. So were they praising him because they were like those that want to be with the popular people when they're popular? You know how it is. We want to talk about Jesus on Sunday. <laughs> we all excited about Jesus on Sunday. We let everybody know our story on Sunday, but then when Monday comes, Jesus is not very popular in the workplace so we don't talk about him so they wear they're waving their palms and they're excited to see him and and he's coming into the city but it was a custom that on the other side of the city somebody else was coming into town on the other side of the city pilot was coming into town so you have two entries of two persons in authority coming into town at the same time. So now he's in town. And in less than seven days, the dynamics is going to change. In less than seven days, some of the same folk that were saying, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, so glad to see, like some of us who have clapped our hands this morning, some of us who have tried to be excited. About this God we said we serve. I wonder sometimes why we do what we do. I wonder how we can sit and say, I'm, I'm just kind of quiet. I just don't make much noise. I like to praise the Lord in my own way. But my challenge has been, were you that quiet when you were watching the Super Bowl? Are you that quiet 
when someone is celebrating you. See, these people were making a whole lot of noise because Jesus was coming into town. But just as we do sometimes ourselves, our interest changes according to who's talking. You know, one time we on this side, Of right. I'm with your pastor. I'm behind your pastor. Then somebody on this side saying, you know, I don't know if he know what he's doing. <laughs> Cause you know. And then we run over to this side, say, you well, you got a point. <laughs> and we oscillate between choices or per, per opinions like a fan going around and around and around. And that's where we find these people. The same folk, some of the same folk. How do I know it was some of the same folk? Because when Pilate asked him, he said, this is the one you call king of the Jews. They said, give us Barabbas, free Barabbas. Free Barabbas. Give us Barabbas. They didn't know why. They just knew that the chief priest came out and said, ask him for Barabbas. Now, these are the same folk that were some of the same folk that were saying, Hosanna. Now they're saying, crucify him. Not because they understand what's happening, but because they're, un they're following what looks like leadership. How many of us know sometimes leadership can be bad shit? But you've got to know who God is in order to be able to distinguish or discern between what's good and what's God. What's good and what's not. What's good and what's evil what is full of purpose, and what is designed to defeat you. But most of the time, we're so opinionated and then fickle that we go with whatever's going or happening at that moment. And what we do is we find ourselves having ups and downs, ups and downs, and then get upset with God because it don't look like God coming through. God just want to know which side are you on. See, but what happened is that they didn't know necessarily why they were asking for Barabbas. They just did it because they were told to. They didn't have any awareness. And then the Holy Spirit took me to another political place. How many of us remember Obamacare? How many of us remember how much people fought against Obamacare? They interviewed a man in Alabama, and he said, I can't, I can't for Obamacare. They asked him, well, what do you think about the Affordable Care Act? He said, I'm in favor of that. Now, what's wrong with that picture? It's the same thing. It was never entitled Obamacare. Someone decided they'd attach a name to it in order to cause controversy. Just wanted to stir up something. And in the midst of all of that, they didn't realize that they were voting for something or against something that would do them good. So where am I going with that? See, they thought they were voting for someone to be free, but because the electoral college, which was made up of only one, which was God, had already elected Jesus. They thought they were voting to set someone free, but the vote was really who can die for all of you in order to make you free. 
See, Barabbas couldn't do it. Barabbas was not designed to do it. He wasn't made out of the right stuff. But I could imagine in my mind, Jesus saying, I'm built for this. I'm built to die for you. You got to know what you built to do. Because can you imagine being God in flesh and somebody telling you, If you could free yourself, can you imagine being God wrapped up in flesh and having to submit to some lies that you know folk are lying? See, we get bent all out of shape when people lie on us. But Pilate recognized that they only brought Jesus because they were jealous. They only brought him before them. See, when you are in leadership position, and all of us have a position of leadership somewhere, if you lead right, if you lead in the spirit of God, it's going to always cause friction. That's why church conferences go the way they go. Quarterly conferences, annual conferences, general conferences, anytime we meet. That's why there's friction, because there will always be friction when right and wrong get in the same place. There will always be friction when you try to do what's right in the midst of a people that don't want to do right. There will always be friction when you go along with a group of folk just because you are a part of their organization. There's a problem. When we will side with someone just because we are part of their party. Even when they're wrong. Y'all know we got, a, we got a bad habit of that culturally. I'm, a, I'm with my family even if they're wrong. No, I'm not. I'm not. Y'all know we say it. We got somebody told me that word that we all, you're my ride or die, baby. I'm not anybody's ride or die. I'm not. I'm not going to be able to be your ride. I can ride with you, but I ain't dying for you. <laughs> what am I saying? I'm saying that there will always be friction when you try to do what's right. Anybody ever said, I'm trying to live right, and the harder I try to live right, the worse things seem to get. The more I try to do, the more I seem to have to do. The more I try to get along with folk, look like the more I folk it. Anybody been there other than me? You're on your job trying to do what's right, and they telling you and training you to do what's wrong. There will always be friction when leadership, in a place of leadership, and leadership that wants to do what's right versus that which wants to do wrong, there will always be friction. If friction is in your house, it's probably because one of you right and one of you not. friction on your job. Somebody's trying to do right and someone's not. That's where the people find themselves in the midst of a vote and they don't even know what they're voting for. But it was by design. It was set up like that. It was made like that because the only one that could die for us was Jesus. The only one that could be said to be sinful and die for us was one that was sinless. So it already tells us Barabbas was a murderer. So he already was disqualified for the election of salvation. He couldn't die for us and for our sins because he had sin in and of himself. 
So what am I saying? I'm saying, you all, we live in a time when we've got to forego popularity. When being popular has to take a back seat to being elected. Why? Because when you are elected, God allows you to go through some stuff. And this is the part I was wondering how God was going to do it. Because I saw myself yesterday talking to you and saying you were built for this. That no matter what the enemy has come thrown your way, you were built for this. That today is the day that the enemy understands how much you were built for this. Because he keeps throwing the same ball. He keeps throwing the same ball. And he thought it was going to get you. But God said to me in my spirit, today's the third day. Today is the third day. And then you've been weary. And you've been worn. And you almost wanted to do this. But God said, no, you were built for this. You were built to stand with him through this. I declare and decree no weapon that's formed against you going to prosper. There are people praying for you that you don't know that are praying. Every day. Someone on the Aberdeen Tupelo district calls your name. But God told me today, he said, he didn't ask me to ask you if you believe. The Holy Spirit challenged me. He said, do you believe I can do it? And you know, when the God starts challenging you to that which seems impossible, we start speculating. You ever been there? I said, well, God, what if he's not there? Holy Spirit said, when have I ever told you to say something when the person is not there? But if he's not there, then he wasn't positioned for what I was going to do today. But you hear. Because today, everybody else, these are just spectators. Because I know God told me to tell you, today is your third day. And we all know what happened on the third day. There's a liberty... See, there, there is tired and weariness in your eyes. But today, we're going to lay an ax to the very root. God says he's going to lay an ax to the root of it. That the very thing that the enemy tries to use to pull you down, God says, I'm going to use it to bring you up. Because I wrestle with the word. I wrestle. But when I let out, talking about my daughter, and how she almost bled to death, we didn't even know it. Changed her whole mental state to the point where I was about to take her out. Didn't know. Just thought it was rebellion. She for, had to forego her plans. She had mapped it out, her, her BS, her, her bachelor's, her master's, and her doctorate. She had to stop at the bachelor's. And everything that the enemy stole from her for those two, three years, God's giving it back to her. And God is not a respect of person. Everything that the enemy has stole, everything that cake a worm has touched, everything that has been eaten up and swallowed. D don't go back. There's a song that says we're going to go back into the devil's camp, take back what he stole. No, God said no. You don't want to go back and get that because if you go back and get it, you're going to bring the same tainted stuff. He said, but I can restore everything. From the top of your head to the soles of your feet. God, I thank you now. Healing from the top of his head to the soles of his feet, God. Restore everything. 
that the enemy has tried to destroy and greater is the gift greater is the gift greater is the gift God father I thank you I thank you for this vessel that stands with him God the weight mm, the struggle the wrestle I see in my spirit the time you just been on your knees just worrying on your knees and saying God please but God when will you go here God do you hear me God I'm, I want oh he said I heard you the first time you prayed but I had to work some things because I needed you to come out better than you went in. I needed you to come out better than you went in. I needed to build some stuff on the inside of you. I needed to let you know what you were made out of. But today is the day of liberty. God's going to turn your morning into dancing. God, I thank you for this vessel, this help meet that has stood in the gap in ways that he doesn't even know she's been standing in the gap. Restore her strength. Restore her joy. Heal that which the enemy has tried to attack, even in her midsection, God. Wholeness, Lord, like never before. And I thank you, God, for this third day. This day of resurrection, this day of getting up. God lay an ax to the very root of that which has hindered them. And how they've stood in spite of the half has not been told, but your eyes have not seen. Your ears have not heard. You can't even imagine what God's about to do in, with, and through you. I hear God say, it's time because the ministry is on the inside of you that needs to come out of you. And the same way you've been walking with him while you were walking with him, God was maturing it in you so that when you open your mouth, to show some women how to stand in the midst of. Show them their role, how to walk beside. It's not old fashioned, it's Bible. Helping them to understand, I'm not his slave. I'm his partner. I'm not his slave, I'm not a doormat. I'm his companion because the two are now one. So when he hurts, I hurt. When he goes through, I go through. Because God said, I wanna build and rebuild this village, but we've gotta make sure that some stuff don't go in the village that was in the village. And what God's gonna do with the both of you supersedes any appointment you could ever get. It's going to cause you to step into a place that's going to be uncomfortable. But as long as you know you're right, you made out of the stuff that's going to be able to stand the friction. Amen. 
Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise. Hallelujah. But now they're not the only ones here that's hurting. There are some of you that are wrestling. You wrestling. I'm not talking about that little wrestle stuff like yesterday the tie went flat. Not, not that kind. But there are some of you in here that are wrestling with stuff and you've been wrestling. And you tired of wrestling. See, because what we have to understand is God is a God of authority. So guess what? If he does it for the shepherd that he's placed in this place, God's going to do it for you. Because the anointing flows down. See, you don't have to be popular with God for God to answer you. You just got to be elected. So I'm going to do the invitation a little differently. If you hear and you know you've been in a wrestle, the kind of wrestle that you're praying, you're trying to be obedient to what God has told you to do, but it seems like the more you try to be obedient, the worse things get. I'm going to ask you to stand. I'm not asking everybody to stand. I'm asking those that are wrestling. That you're wrestling with some things. I know y'all like, she's she talking to us. Let me, let me explain it. Can I break it down for a minute? You trying to fit in with the folk you go to school with. You know, the ones that get all the attention. May not be a whole bunch of folk, but just one or two folk. You just want to be their friend. Because none of us want to be in a place where people reject us. I don't care how much adults act like they got it out. I don't care what nobody think about it. Yes, we do. We do. We care what folks think. That's why all of us got on clothes today. That's why we combed our hair. Because we want people to perceive us a certain way. But I want you to understand something. God created you with a purpose. And you don't have to try to fit in with anybody. Because nobody can be as good as you being you. You the best you anybody could ever be. No one else was built like you. Designed like you. Because God has a purpose for you. And I want you to know that. So what if somebody's smarter? You don't have to compete as long as you're doing the smartest you you can be. As long as you're giving it your all. Be like, yeah. Yeah. Just do you. So what you don't want to be with a tie on? But that's you. I had a third grader. He wore a tie every day. He would cry when he couldn't wear a tie. He wore dress slacks every single day because that was who he was. Don't be afraid to be who you are. Y'all feel me? You understand what I'm saying? Be the best you. Because if you try to be him, you gonna mess up because you're not built like him. You can't be her. God didn't make you to be her. He didn't make you to look like her, sound like her, do anything like her. Why? Because he has a special job for you. And one for you and you, you and you and you, 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 all of you. And what God called you to do is not what he called me to do. And you're not an accident. You're not here by mistake. Because God has a purpose. But you can't get hung up on what looks good. Because most of the time, what looks good ain't good for you. You ever notice how the vegetables that you can't stand, them the ones that got the most vitamins in it, 
That's kind of how living is. The hardest stuff to do is the stuff that's right sometimes. But the reward, the reward. If you're standing, pray this prayer with me. Say, dear God, today, I rejoice in my ability to stand. I delight in my ability to move forward. But in all of my ability, I am still weak when it comes to your strength. My struggle is real, oh God. But today, I give it to you. I give it all to you that I might be released from the struggle that life is providing me. Help me, oh God, to hear you, to see you, be led by you in every situation. Help me to let go of that which means me no good, no matter who it is, no matter what it is. I release them now in the name of Jesus and I surrender to your will. I surrender to your way. I surrender to you, oh God, this day to serve you, to please you, to give you glory, and give you honor when days are good, when days are not good, but in all things, I give you praise, I give you thanks, and I rejoice in you. In the name of Jesus, amen. There is power in the name. There is power in the name of Jesus to bring. to declare it. There is power in the name. There is power in the name to break every chain. Break every chain. I hear, I hear the chain. Jesus, in the name of Jesus, there is power, there is healing, there is whatever you need, in the name of Jesus, don't cry hallelujah if you don't mean it. But I dare you to praise him. Say, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. You're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy. 
Let the cloud fall down right now, Lord, let it fall down. Just rest in this place, Lord, rest in this place. Rest, oh God, rest in this place. Sometimes we have to be quiet right in the presence. Lord, we release. your peace in this place. We release your rest in this place. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit dwell in this place. Let your spirit reign in this place. God, we thank you now that your word will not return to you void. It does this week that whatever we experience, we're built for it. But not only are we built for the trial, but God, we are built to receive the blessing. So just rain on us in this place. Restore and set free like only you can. We'll always be so very careful to give you the praise. In the name of Jesus, we pray. People of God, say amen, amen, amen and amen. The doors of church is open. Maybe somebody would like to come today. Elect by design. I don't know about you, but I'm so happy today that I was elect by design. We thank God for such a great, great message today. We thank God for how he has used Elder Williams today to bring the word, to bring the word. I don't know, but I feel in my spirit that somebody, somebody needs to come today. Somebody need to come today. Somebody need to come. Somebody need to come. That's the choir saying. Somebody need to come. If you don't feel too well in your body, just come on down and pray. This Palm Sunday. The word of God been preached. Come on down and pray. This is Palm Sunday. My Lord, my Lord. If you don't feel too well, if I was you, I would come on down. I would come on down. Come on down and pray. I'm going to ask the speaker to come down. And pray. When she can. Come on down and pray your prayer. Somebody, somebody need to come. Come on down and pray. Your father, you have a come. Come and pray your own prayer. Tell God you thank you. But just let you see another Palm Sunday. Come pray your own prayer. God will hear you. He would hear you. 
if you come and pray. All we got to do is just ask him. Just ask him. And he'll come. Right into your heart. He loves you. That's the reason why he sent his son to the cross. That's the reason he sent him. Oh, thank God for these young people coming in. Thank God for the young people coming in. Thank God. Elect by design. Thank God for the young people. Thank God for the young people coming in. We're going to ask the speaker, come on down. Come on down and lay your hands on some of these people. If there's any senior Christians here, if you want to come lay your hands on somebody, just come on down. Lay your hands on somebody. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. If there's ever a time that we need the Lord, we need him now. If you know you've been born again, come on down. Lay your hands on somebody. You can lay your hands on me. I deserve all prayer. Jesus tells us he prayed. If the Lord prayed, what about you and I? And the Bible tells us, help me, Holy Ghost, to keep my peace. The Bible tells us that when Jesus was on his way to the cross, this Passion Week, he said he had to go along into the Garden of Gethsemane and pray. If Jesus had to pray, what about you and I? Lord, have mercy, Jesus. We never get enough prayer. I'm asking some of these elder people who are saved, come on down here and lay your hands on these young people. If you know you've been born again, come down here and pray for these young people. You know you've been saved, come on down and pray for them. Come show them the way. If you show them the way, they'll stay. Oh, praise God, praise God. Thank God. Thank God for these young people. God bless you, baby. God bless you, Mama. Oh, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Jesus, for these young people. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for these young people. Thank you, Master. Oh, thank you, Master. Thank you for the adults. Thank you for the mothers and for the fathers who are laying their hands on their sons and daughters to show them the way. Oh, thank you, Master. Church, God's way works better than anybody else's. God is a good God. If we just put our trust and faith in him, he's all right, God. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost, to hold my peace. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Master. When you finish praying, you may go back and take your seat. And Lord, we thank you. We thank you for every young person who came here to kneel down. We thank you for the mothers, for the fathers, we thank you for the grandparent. And oh God, we thank you for how you're going to answer our prayers. Because we realize and know that you are right now, God. And you are always willing to answer our prayers. If we only just put our trust and faith in you. We thank you. We thank you for the young people's moving this morning. We thank you. Because we realize and know it's nobody but you. Nobody but you who moves on their little hearts. We pray that you would just bless them and keep them. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Help me to hold my peace, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. We thank you for this palm sign. Thank you. We thank you for 
your son. We thank you for your son going to the cross for us, carrying all of our sins. Didn't have to do it, but he did. We thank you. We thank you. Oh, God, without you, we don't know what we would even do. We just thank you today. Bless our young people and keep them. Oh, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Mel. I'm so happy that the Lord saved me one day. And I'm happy that he saved you. I'm happy that he saved you also. Because heaven is a place for all of us. And all of us wants to go to heaven. Isn't that right? And I thank God for the parent this morning. For even having their sons and daughters present in the house of the Lord. I thank God for you today. I thank God for you. I just thank God for you. Just keep on playing for us, brother. Everything is all right because God is moving. He's moving. God is moving. God is moving. Mm. Just keep, keep on praying, somebody. Keep praying. Just keep praying. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. Moving in your house. We thank you, Jesus. Oh, God. Nobody can move like you, Lord. Nobody can move like you. And we all thank you today. We thank you. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you for your son.
Just keep on playing the same music, please. Keep playing. As our stewards prepare to come for our offering, keep on playing the same music, please. We all know what we're supposed to be doing today. We also we're supposed to be taking up a special offering also today, all this at the same time. For the water in Sudan. I think we all got that on our emails. So bring your special offering also today. Bring your offering today. The ones who have these folders, this is the last Sunday of Lenten. I said Sunday. This is the last Sunday of Lenten. So some of us have our Lenten folders today. We're going to ask you to bring them also. We, are, we also need some more baskets, I believe. Because I think we're going to take up so much money today until it's going to be over, over, overloaded. It's all going to be, you may need some extra baskets on the side somewhere. Because some of us have our folders today. Today is the last Sunday for Lenten season. Last Sunday for Lenten season. Last Sunday for Lenten season. May we all please stand. And the ushers will direct all of us around. Please, please do not talk. Let's keep the spirit in. God is in this place. Please give as God has blessed you. God has blessed all of us. All of us. And we thank you. Are there any more? Lord, we thank you for these gifts that you've given us to uh, give back to you. And Father, we do not have words to express how thankful we are that we even had something to give. So many people who do not have anything and it may be someone who's on the side of my voice. No, God, 
We pray that you would help us that we may be able to use it to build your kingdom. In the name of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. I thank God for our great speaker today. I thank God for our speaker today. A gifted, gifted, gifted elder. And what a sermon, what a sermon. Also, thank God for our young people. Our young people. Thank God for our musicians, our urchins, And I thank God for the secretary, Sister Panky. And let's give our presiding elder and Mrs. Capers a hand. I thank God for them. <laughs> Amen. And I thank God for you and your presence. But most of all, we all thank God for his Holy Spirit. Isn't that right? At this time, we'll have our doxology. If all hearts and minds are clear, and then after the doxology, we would have our benediction by our our speaker, Elder Williams. You notice I didn't say her first name. I don't want to mess up her name. Amen. Amen. Our doxology, please. May we please stand. been making this announcement everywhere I've been going. If you have a child or if you know of a child or parents of a child who is serviced through special education and they need an advocate for their individualized education program plan, there is something strange happening in Mississippi that I don't understand. I'm a special education advocate. And I've never heard of a child going to school one day and his placement being changed the next day to a mental facility. He has been to school all of one day this entire school year. And they've sent him to four different places. They have violated every civil right law that he has. And I'm sure he's not the only one. I will go with them. I don't care that you're in Jackson and I'm wherever I am. Sometimes I'm in Tupelo, sometimes I'm in Meridian. But I'm leaving here going to Tupelo because I have a case in the morning. Because I believe if we don't fight for our children, and it's almost impossible for parents, we will say, oh, they're just lazy or they don't, but it is almost impossible for parents to know their rights unless they have an advocate. Because if you don't know the terminology, 
People will talk over your head in order not to give you what your child deserves. And I'm going to fight as hard as I can for our babies to give them a chance to be great. Amen. Because my, my little brother back here, I don't care. Whatever, what, whatever y'all tell me afterwards, I don't think it's going to top what he just said. He said, now that was a good sermon. <laughs> Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. He said, because I felt it in my spirit for the first time. That made my day. And this is my prayer to God for you. That the God of peace would sanctify you, Holy Spirit, soul, and body. That he would keep your mind in perfect peace as your mind is stayed on him. And as we depart this place, let us always remember we are never out of God's presence. Amen. Amen. You are dismissed into the presence of God.